this kind of deliciousness, imperceptible deliciousness, imperceptible, heavy on the imperceptible. What kind of, um, what, what chemical supposedly enhances, uh, is, is the umami, the main, main umami chemical that enhances our, our deliciousness perception? No? Huh? Gluten. Kind of, nearly. Anyone? Is it monosodium glutamate? Monosodium glutamate. Give your heart attack, though. Monosodium glutamate, right? So monosodium glutamate is one of the things that enhances this to be this marvelous deliciousness. So in my jaded way, in most people in their jaded way, if you're buying, they're buying something and it's got monosodium glutamate in it, what does that say about the product you later eat? It doesn't taste very nice. It doesn't taste very nice. It's probably low quality, bad product. Right? So if you're buying something with MSG in it, it's likely that it's not very great because they're trying to enhance your deliciousness even though the product itself is taste crap and great. Okay? Um, that's why in processed meat, in processed meat, they add, um, they process the meat, they boil the meat, or they fry meat, they boil the meat, and they go through the whole process of meat, <coughs> meat processing uh, uh, system, and then they have to add to meat, meat flavouring, including MSG, due to the fact that the processing takes the flavour of the meat out of the meat. So you have to then add the meat processing back to it. Okay, so that's, that's where MSG also comes in. Okay, so it's this, deli it's this deliciousness, this kind of deliciousness. And what we're trying to get in this, in this these two lectures we're going to have for this little next week is this idea of how can we add deliciousness engagement deliciousness into your uh, into your um, your user experience. What is delicious about it? What how can you get people to do stuff? Maybe that they don't even want to do, but they oh, it's delicious. Okay. So this is what we're talking about. And of course, I'll be making an analogy in a bit, but you know, business applications, which are right for gamification, business applications, are the processed meat that the application should work. Okay. They suck out all the goodness and then they have to squirt it back into the game of the That's my idea anyway. But let's see. Okay. So we say engagement or this kind of uh, umami, this uh, deliciousness, is social, can be summarized as social dynamics, phonology, and gamification. Okay? You see about aesthetics, but how it gets this engagement. So this engagement comes with social dynamics, social aspects. Fun, how do we get fun into the experience? And how do we also make things games, like games and like gamification? Now, of course, social dynamics and phonology also inform gamification. Okay? Obviously, when you're playing games, especially if it's a multi person game, then you've got the social dynamics, you've also got fun. Okay? We also know that social dynamics came into games when I was a kid back in the old days, when we had Ataris. And uh, and also, um, when we actually went to games arcades. How have you been to a gaming arcade? Nobody's been to a gaming arcade. You have been to a gaming arcade, so you're not quite as uh, young as you all look. You're actually like, you know, a bit older than you're 
Kenny Oakins. Kenny Oakins. One of the very best Kenny Oakins is in Chicago. It's got 8,000 machines now, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, in the old days, Kenny Oakins was the thing, and even those that sort of tried to realise that social diameter is important because they had leaderboards, just like pinball machines did back in the 50s, right? So they're trying to have the social dynamic there. You're going to compete so that you have to get the social dynamic. So, what do we mean by social dynamics? And this is what we mean. Social interaction with others. A more humanistic, naturalistic, conversational uh, interface. Now, this relates in some ways to gamification as usual, because who knows what the original meaning of competition was? Competitive. I'm going to say I'm competitive, but competitive is very good. What's that actually mean? Well, what did it originally mean? What was it originally used for? It's obviously been, you know, been screwed up in current society, but what was it? What competition, what competition meant to originally describe? Yeah? So it comes from Greek, it means working together for better. Okay? Just like politics means for the people. Both of these things are completely screwed up. Okay? <laughs> but there we go. So, competition is about this kind of social dynamic stuff as well. It's not just about, uh, that's why it's useful in gamification, because if you take it to its original meaning, it means that you can kind of get better by playing with part of the other people together by actually working together to be better. So, we also have this conversational interface that goes into it. So, you also get parts of the conversational interface whereby you might have. Uh, if, you're, if you're on gaming websites or if you're on any, well, even if you're on any kind of, uh, if you're any activity, talking to fellow uh, people who are doing the same activity can often be a good thing to do, right? Because you can say, well, this bit of the application, or this bit of the work is crap, or this bit is good, or you can talk about that kind of thing, and it, it makes you more engaged in the, in the actual experience. So, that's why a lot of um, applications uh, nowadays have idea of social dynamics and social networking components actually in them. So that you can actually talk to your fellow co-workers about how crap your boss is or whatever. Okay? Facebook, not Facebook, Microsoft do one of these. I think Facebook is doing the business version now. So it's just for business, internal business social dynamics. And it makes it easier to arrange uh, social activities for workers, uh, but also it means that you can solve problems with different applications or different parts of the work process by just asking these kind of social dynamic sites. If I was going to link this social dynamic, dynamic stuff to other aspects, um, to other things that allow people to get their jobs done, and you're all computer scientists, scientists you're hardcore coders, say, then where would we, what, well, can you give me an example, where might this be? GitHub, yeah, GitHub's got, so you know, that's, that's actually a very good one because it's, it's got a social part, but it's also full of Phillips, like conversion, etc. and sharing. What else? Yes. Maybe pair programming? Pair programming, yes, yeah, very good. I do pair programming as well. Yeah, that's more of a social dynamic in the actual real world. That's good, yeah. Uh, Hackathons, yeah. Retrospectives at the end of the day, that's right. So you can be, you've got a reflective, uh, reflective, most of those are fine. Are you doing the reflective stuff? Are you? Reflective tool? Well, 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 I hope you've got uh, lots of these reflections and lots of stuff written in your uh, notes, notebook, which you'll take to your demo. You know, your engineering logbook, which your, engineering, your uh, examiner will want to see, won't they? Uh, yeah. Stack overflow. Yes, that's the real argument. Stack overflow. Stack Overflow is going to go as well as people on that piece, social dynamic. Everybody on Stack Overflow is also thinking to themselves, even if you're a, a remote worker or you're a contractor, um, then you, you're you part of a shared society. That's why people answer the question. When there's no benefit to them to do something, really. You know, no work benefit to them, but they want to be part of this social, they feel part of that social dynamic. Because you, you're sharing something with the others. I mean, the interesting part for Stack Overflow is to look at some of the really niche places. I run Stack Overflow, and I go for, and um, I code in, well, as well as Go, uh, the real world. 
Uh, and, um, you know, very few people can even go, well, why are small people can even go now? But Lua, very few people can even go to Lua. Uh, but the amount of people who respond to you is also because we're all popular. Which is always interesting. Okay. Propellers into having better user experiences. Why is this? Why does social dynamics? It says because they are closer to expectation of person to person interaction. If it propels into having these better user experiences, how about I link this to something I said just previously about 30 minutes ago? So if you're on the social dynamic side and somebody's saying, wow, this is bloody awesome, this thing here, this, this piece of work we're going to do, or this thing we're going to do, or this bit of software we're going to build, you're going to think, wow, yeah, that sounds awesome, that sounds awesome, so I'm going to be I'm going to be far more predisposed to think it's great. Okay, and take advantage of expectations that conform us to social and cultural norms. So this allows us to understand about social and cultural norms. When is it easy? If, you're, if I wanted to brainwash somebody, how, how would I do it? What's the first thing I do if I want to bring up somebody? Uh, <laughs> what, but before I do that, what's the first thing I do if I want to bring up somebody? Huh? You get caught up on social media. Get you caught up on social media? Could be, could be. What do you do? Yeah, it goes against like getting a group of people together who you've told to think the thing that you want that other person to think and then get them to talk to that person. Yeah. As if they're all like separate, like they, they don't know. So that's very good. So what they, so if you've got a set of people who, you get a set of people who all think the same thing, or all think this thing, and then you get them to interact with that person as individuals, not as a group. So there's two ways to think about this. The first one is, the first thing you want to do, if you really want to, if you really want to, uh, um, if you really want to very much meet, is to isolate them. Because in isolation, your idea of what social and cultural norms are important gets huge because it's just about you. We always ask for reassurance, we ask for confirmation of something we're doing. That's what, you know, one of the important things about friends and other kinds of relationships is that we ask, oh, am I being stupid? You know, Fred went out the other night and he was in a doctor and came over and wanted to go floor. That's what right it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so it's just good. It's okay. Well, no, it's not. It's not. Right. So we all, we all have this. So, First thing is isolation. This that you're talking about with regard to the uh, the other people that are there is a kind of is a kind of isolation, and it's more um, it's more it's more difficult to address because that kind of isolation, where everybody's saying the same thing but as though they're individuals, means that you're being isolated. You just don't know you're being isolated. Yeah. And what's more, how might we think about that in a marketing context? What would we call it if that was marketing? Viral marketing, that's why people do it, it's viral marketing. So the whole point of viral marketing is that we can say this thing is good, we start off some kind of different expectation or different uh, social cultural norm, uh, like you know, we say this thing is good, this thing is really good, this thing is really good, and we get lots of people who we think are friends talking to you more about it. Okay? But they all share the same opinion, so your opinion becomes one of theirs. Okay? You become an appetizer for somebody, pretty much. Okay. So, group dynamics also. So we spoke about this last week, right? The courier, the courier tablet. This is what one looks like. Have you? Uh, these are awesome. Did anybody actually go out and look at the YouTube video of this? And, uh, about, no, no, no. God forbid. God forbid you do any work outside of this that isn't the Damn you! That's what I say. Damn you all! Uh, you should have gone online and looked at this. This is awesome. You'll be sorry when you're in jobs. <sighs> now, so this, this also, this, this group dynamics, this is one of the key things that Courier Tablet, Microsoft's Courier Tablet, was trying to build. Okay. It's trying to have this group dynamics. So, you can do interesting things like 
Um, if you've got these two, two career tablets or any career tablets near to each other, you can flick off your notes using your pen to a career tablet that was in that, at that, as in, at that location, okay, for that compass heading. So generally, if you were in a circle, say, oh, well, I'll share this note with you, Fred, and you just flick it, and it hits their, it hits their uh, career tablet. Okay? There's a little bit of electronic negotiation. Um, it also means that you can easily share and interact with people because the way that they're doing this is if you're architects, if you're teams of people, you need to share different things and uh, all that kind of stuff. Then this is a big thing to also uh, do this kind of social dynamic and share with them. But of course, Microsoft being the far sighted and awesome organisation they are, killed it um, for a couple of cars. Better to have tedious, tedious products than it is to have far sighted. Uh, here's another one. This is a bit of phonology as well. It's also for some guys. This is basically for guys who have seen this. Have you guys seen this? It's an ATM machine with a different language on it. And the language here is Cockney. Okay, so you're facilitating group dynamics. Now, it also comes up in the fun part in a minute. But you're facilitating group dynamics because you'll say, oh, what was in this little area here, in the, in the uh, east end of London, I think. Uh, we all have this kind of shared company kind of deal. So we're all together, we're in this group. We know what all these things mean. So it's good. Okay? And that means that, bizarrely, more people in, in uh, the local title, more people in the East End of London go and use this kind of issue that have company as the language selection and they select the language company than others. Just so they're all part of the group that want to find to see this from you. So you can do the same for lots of different dialects that allow you to make your group dialect smaller. You know, so that therefore, yeah, you can say, well, all English people, that's a bit far, large. You might want a Yorkshire version. A help me look. Those are not good for the same. It's not help me look. There we are. Here we go. So, that's why it's here under the group dynamic part. That's what it's trying to make you do. And it's trying to use the group dynamic to get you to, to get the money out of it. So that therefore, you now, here's another part. After we've done the group dynamics, so we do we know we know we need to we know we know we need to think about groups. But here's another thing: phonology. How do we make things fun? So there's a whole before gamification, phonology was the, the thing. Okay, the people like this idea of making things fun. Because they said, well, why do you think they thought that making this sort of fun in terms of computer science was a good idea? Yeah, people then enjoyed using it, yes, okay, so that's one reason, yeah. Was there a perception that computers were scary and avoided? People thought computers were scary and avoided that point. One of the main things is that people thought that computers were only work. So computers were associated with really work. And so once it's associated with work, there's no way to sell them anything to anybody. Uh, what you want to do is make people think that the computers are part of their life, that the device they have says something about who they are, and it also says something that allows them to do things that aren't to do with work. So if you think about your own personal devices, while well, some of it allows you to get some of the work jobs done, the vast majority of it is to fill your, your ideas of the aesthetics, the uh, emotional connection to those devices and applications, and also to facilitate social dynamics, to facilitate phonology, and also to facilitate, to facilitate games, game okay. For most of the stuff that we consider personal, we know that people have their work device, because it have that stuff on it, but also their own personal device, which is exactly the same device. Okay, so it's just two, it's got different apps on it. So they, this is my personal thing. It's all my personal stuff is. Okay? And the other one is not. The other one just works. Okay, so. The thing that's useful, the things here to remember are this personalization, personalization and customization. People can't buy into this idea of fun if they aren't allowed to customize stuff. If they can't say that this thing is an expression of who I am. They don't think it's so fun. They think it's less fun. So if you can make things 
first thing to do, then it means that you can think, well, this is this device in my hand. And it's more from I'm using it than the Intangible enjoyment. So this thing is trivial. It's about trivial um, enjoyment of the experience. So for instance, you might say that certain things have a tangible enjoyment, but just the way that the feel of this Mac is, when you straight through of it, that might be an intangible enjoyment. I mean, it might be tangible as well, because you're straight through of it, but the way that you can phrase it, the way that you feel about it, could be going to have an effect on the You then got tangible action. So, I'm able to do something that's actually tangible. Now, there was, who's seen the, um, who's seen the, uh, the recycling competition in London, New York? Anyone? The Sony Recycling Competition. Okay, well, so this is, this is exactly this kind of chronology. It's also a big gamification, right? So these things are quite highly linked. So when you think about it, the phonology part is really the, if you like, tangible bits of gamification. Right? You need these things, these phonology things, to get the gamification as well. So these are the bottom layer. This is why they're in this order. Um, the thing to think about is that there was this, there was a competition for uh, recycling because people wanted to increase recycling, and they also wanted to sell technology. And so you had this idea of recycling stations which were which had electronic weighing machines at the bottom of them, and they have an amount of recycled weight. And that <coughs> recycled weight would be in competition with New York and different cities. Okay. And therefore, people in London were recycling more than they normally would because they just wanted to be in New York, okay. who were also recycling. Okay. So that's tangible action. There's something you can do. <coughs> okay. With this phonology, how difficult do you think it is to test it? How difficult? Yeah, quite difficult because it's so subjective. Yeah, quite difficult because it's so subjective. Yeah, I hate games. So like, that's not fun, but it is for a lot of other people. So, that's a, so, so therefore it's very difficult to test these things. What you've got to do is go with the general view, the general idea. If you can allow personalization, customization, it means you can get all of these intangible aspects. It also means personalization and customization means a really key to all of this, because it means that if you can do that, you can, you can get more people um, who are able to participate because they've got a better interface because that goes back to accessibility and speaks of accessibility but also it means that you can get people to change the way that they experience the system that's really important okay here's one kind of phonology that you can just stick in there where's a bit of fun impact in the dropbox uh, thing no it's the dropbox website huh yeah that's a pretty fun no where is it from? Yeah? Yeah. So what it's saying here is it's really slow to use. So time to press it. Okay. Uh, and that changes based on how you know how it uh, how it's working how it's working. It does have engine appetite, right? Because who's who's paying for the uh, not Mars Corporation or whoever makes Snickers, I don't know. But uh, yeah. So there's also a, a bit of fun there. You can also have another one. Who's seen this application it's called Handbrake? Yes, all of us uh, people who would like to have uh, liberated, uh, <laughs> liberated movie content. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, as probably is this. And so here, when Handbrake's done, it says, put down that content. So, it's a, so before you go to have it's time to have a cocktail. Why not make some cocktail? You can take this one, and you can take this one to drink it, pretty much. And then from there, it says, oh, it's time. Time now. Time to put your cocktail down. 
So, mimic the metaphor. That's the other thing. So, a lot of the time, people say metaphors suck. They're really crap. But metaphors for familiarity don't suck. They're quite good. So, mimic metaphor is one of the things that they think is really good in technology. Have a communal activity, which is what was also spoken to in group dynamics. And learning skills acquisition. So, people like to have learned something from time. People to literally learn something. So they like to learn something more like on the skills acquisition. And when they've had that skills acquisition, how do I relate this to identification? How does learning the skills acquisition relate to identification? Or to even get it? Make it harder. But also, if you've got a skills acquisition, you don't want to say, I've now got a badge, or I've now got this leader board because I've got this additional skills acquisition. I've learned something. So, yeah. Okay, full knowledge again, you know, please enter your book of briefing, which apparently means pin in Cockney Rhyming Sign. So, it's a pin as well, because pin is also a good dynamics. Now, gamification. Let's see what game. Who knows what gamification is? I mean, am I teaching to the. Am I already talking? People know what gamification is about. Okay, a few people know what gamification is about. And who thinks gamification, all those people, you have them just think gamification is a good thing, it's a force for good, but a force for evil. Force for good. Force for good, force for good, force for good. No, I'm not evil. Huh? No, I'm evil. So can you think evil? Force for evil? What do you think? Obviously. In the middle. Uh, more evil. More evil. <laughs> near, near the good, more evil. Okay, so what actually, well, before I actually say what it is, because I don't want anything as well, let's see what this introduction to gamification says, if indeed the sound works for me. I've tested it this morning, so it should. Education system sure is a very better. 
If refreshing your Facebook wall is more exciting than school or work, nothing's wrong. Hence, gamification. At its most basic, gamification simply takes all those inner box techniques we all know so well from earlier episodes, leveling systems, achievements, quests, checklists, rewards, etc., and layers of over-existing activities. Scanning barcodes when doing inventory becomes a lot more engaging when there's a progress bar on your barcode scanner showing you how much closer you are to leveling up each time you scan an item. Getting an achievement for going 20 whole days without a customer complaint, or for finishing 30 math problems in a single night, it practically ensures that no one drops the ball on day 18 or quits doing their math at problem 25. It's the exact same thing that pushes us to just finish this level. There have been studies on it, it works. It's proven to increase workplace productivity, facilitate learning, and even make patients take their medicine on time. But this is only the very beginning of how we can gamify our lives. There are a thousand vectors we can use to improve on this simple Skinner box core. Everything from integrating our school and work experience with the leisure we participate in in our free time, to simple aesthetic things like better contextualizing our work and making sure the theme or setting is psychologically conducive to the activity itself. Kind of like how when you go to Disney World, everything down to the trash bins near the line for the rides all fit within the setting and don't break you out of that mindset of enjoying the ride. If we can do this, then we can deliver on a vision where we are as excited and energized to engage in our serious lives as much as we are our play lives. There will be less distinction between the two, and perhaps someday there won't be a difference at all. All work will be play, and all play will help enrich our lives. But there's a really nasty potential flip side to this idea, and it's already begun to happen. Companies are beginning to realize that we're no longer caught by traditional advertising the way we once were. We've been so bombarded by media that we don't even look at billboards anymore. We flip channels through commercials and just fast forward straight through them. We don't even register banner ads on a web page any longer. So they turned to new tools to compel us to shape our consumption in a way that's beneficial to them. Look at the rewards on your credit cards. The smarter companies have started having you level up for racking up debt. Check out the progress bar on your frequent flyer program, or the achievements that some of these programs are starting to dole out for taking routes that are more economical for them. Even the McDonald's annual Monopoly game was an example of gamification seeping into market. It directs you toward purchasing soft drinks and fries, the two most profitable items for them, by putting the most game pieces per dollar on those items. So, given all that, I don't really want to broadcast my basic thoughts on how to really take this sort of thing to the next level. However, if any of you guys happen to be educators or doctors and you're interested in implementing these sort of tactics into your field, our email address is coming right up in the end credits. Usually, Jamie's charges game companies a good bit of money for that kind of consulting, but in your case, he's happy to make an exception. Anything to help make reality a little more fun for everybody. So, yeah, that's about it. Gamification is going to be big and it's probably going to be awesome. Just be wary because somebody out there is going to try and use it against you. Just keep your eyes open. Thanks again to Eric for the pretty pictures. See you next time. <laughs> So, that's gamification, the moment of the bit of the time, like suddenly the fly like you write into the uh, serious cat. I like serious cat, that's, uh, I like serious cat. Did you all see serious cat? Yeah, serious cat, there's a sound. Everybody likes serious cat, he was like, 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 Anyway, Serious Cat is awesome um, in the gamification stage. You'll also notice that you talk about other different um, uh, YouTube videos, like, you know, the start of the day, people looking at our, our, our previous YouTube videos. Well, they're on this playlist, so if you really want to look at those, the playlist of 13 or something on this side, on this page uh, of slides. So you can see that it says on the top, 1 of 13. So this is the first one, because it's kind of the intro, but there's, there's 13 more in the um, so, ah, right. So, in general, program. Damn it! Anyway, pro gamification. So people. We can see that these two sides of gamification, pro gamification, as critics point out, they're just some game park products are just purely executed because of that, right? But other cases, in other cases, they they think that they give a really good uh, way <coughs> of working. Okay, a really good way of working. Now, con gamification just says all these gets in suits who just want to suck you dry. And also, also just want to get you to do far more work than you really want to do. Uh, we'll put bad gamification into their product, so that that's exactly what we want to do. Even now, the fact that I haven't completed my Facebook profile such that I don't give up the 100% of the 